Welcome to the IFRS summary videos. Please have a look at the original uh, Zoom lecture that IFRS had arranged during the lockdown, because that will have uh, more information and also videos. This is just a short summary of those uh, videos. Today, we're going to talk about uh, how we can do gasless laparoscopic surgeries for infertility. Infertility is defined if a couple does not have any pregnancy after a period of about uh, 24 months or two years. This is actually not exactly a medical problem, but then it can cause uh, significant stress, which can be psychological, financial, or even medical. And despite the various advances there, like the in vitro fertilization, etc., laparoscopy still has a significant place in diagnosis and treatment. And uh, many of the conditions that cause infertility, the diagnosis is very difficult before the era of laparoscopy because the people are very hesitant to do laparotomies for diagnosis. And the uh, hysterosalpingography was probably the only available option for tubal patency testing prior to the era of laparoscopic surgeries. This had a very poor sensitivity, only about 65%, and even specificities only 80%. And of course, uh, laparotomy will have almost the same uh, sensitivity and specificity as uh, laparoscopic surgeries. But then it's too major a procedure to offer for diagnosis. And 75% uh, of the time, the causes of infertility is in women and about 25% in men. And uh, diagnostic laparoscopy can give a clue to the cause in about half the cases. So it is a worthwhile option to consider. As you mentioned earlier, laparotomy is a major surgery and not many people would be willing to undergo laparotomy. The advantage of gasless laparoscopy surgery is that the incision is much smaller and in the umbilicus, which is quite acceptable. And in addition to that, we also combine uh, doing a hysteroscopy or having a look inside the blood, I mean inside the uterus, to look for conditions like Asherman syndrome, which are very difficult to diagnose without the hysteroscope. And uh, we generally use the uh, Hysteroscope, uh, the urology resectoscope, or uh, the cystoscope, or even the urethroscope, which is much less expensive and uh, easily available. And uh, of all the conditions which uh, are treatable, the hysteroscopic uh, treatment has a very good success rate, which uh, ranges in various studies from 17 to 90 percent almost. And you can diagnose, uh, as you can see here, the leomimus in the intramural region. And you can also resect all these things. And you can resect the additions in Asherman syndrome. You can remove polyps. So endoscopic treatment has a significant place in uh, evaluation in fertility. And of course, the ovulation disorders are something which needs uh, medical treatment. But then the tubal blocks, sometimes even simple thing as uh, cervical mucus or can block. And there are some additions which can block. And these are fairly simple to treat by endoscopic means. And one of the most significant conditions, which is more prevalent nowadays, which can be treated uh, is a polycystic ovarian disease. Although the medical treatment has been described, the best treatment is to decrease the uh, pressure by puncturing the cyst. And this gives a period of about uh, six months for the couple to conceive. And this can be metformin and other drugs could be added to, during this period. And then uh, very often the unexplained uh, infertility is due to additions, inflammations, endometriosis, and so on. So these are fairly easily treatable with the uh, gasless laparoscopic surgeries. And uh, we have had a very good uh, success with the tubal blocks, relieving the tubal blocks. 
by using the irritatory endoscope and having a look at the, the, the femoral orifice and the tube. And uh, we do what is called hydrocephalation or with high pressure pump saline into the tube, which relieves most of the minor blocks. The advantage is that we can do it simultaneously with the gasless laparoscopy surgery. So you know that uh, the tube, which is not patent earlier, has become patent now with hydrocephalation. And of course, uh, if there are hydrosalpings or biosalpings or hematosalpings, these can be treated at the same time with the diagnostic laparoscopy. And then we have various uh, cysts, which can be either simple functional cysts or follicular cysts. These uh, can cause what we call middle nourish or intermenstrual pain. And uh, about a quarter of them can cause uh, pain and infertility. Dermoid cyst uh, can easily be found and treated. And one advantage of uh, gasless uh, laparoscopy surgery is that you can use a open, large, uh, open suction. And when you're doing suction, the abdominal cavity does not uh, collapse. And it's fairly easy to remove the specimen. And same thing about uh, chocolate cyst. These uh, can be a little difficult, uh, even at the open surgery, because uh, they are quite densely adherent. So instead of laparoscopy surgery, if you use the gaseous laparoscopy surgery, it's far more easier to treat relative to the conventional laparoscopy surgeries. Of course, in additions can be released uh, comfortably with gaseous laparoscopy surgery. And it is a dry gases which uh, can lead to post-op additions with the conventional laparoscopy, which does not happen with the gasless laparoscopic surgery. So this is one of the reasons uh, why people advocate uh, gasless laparoscopic surgeries, because of less additions in the post-op period. And then, uh, of course, uh, we do have uh, the unexplained cause of infertility, which you can benefit with the uh, diet, exercise, stopping smoking, limiting alcohol, and not taking anabolic steroids and so on. These obviously can uh, help if these contribute to the cause. Going back to the history of the laparoscopic surgery, is Dr. Palmer, who pioneered uh, laparoscopic surgery for infertility. In fact, uh, there's a point called Palmer's uh, point in the left uh, hypochondrium, which is used to encephalate where if it's uh, difficult, especially if there are additions and so on. But then it was uh, Dr. Kurtzen, the German gynecologist, who really popularized uh, the conventional laparoscopic uh, surgeries. And there are a couple of things you need to remember when you're doing gasless laparoscopic surgeries. In regular laparoscopic surgery, the gas which pushes the intestines away. Here, we need to use a gravity. So you need to have a steep uh, head down position, especially if you're doing uh, pelvic surgeries. And it's also good to have the patient in a lithotomy position so that uh, you can have a control, you can pass a uterine manipulator to move the uterus and lift the uterus and so on. So before starting, you need to make sure that uh, you have shoulder braces so that the patient does not slip because you have a steep lithotomy position. Now, of course, in the original lecture, you'll see how the incision is made, how the lift is fixed, and uh, the opening is uh, made, and you check with the finger, there are no additions, and fixed. And it is one of the fairly simple procedures, which can give a very favorable uh, results. And also, it can uh, have a very hardly visible scar, which is very, very easily acceptable by the women. And uh, this can be combined with the uh, conventional urology equipment like the urethroidoscope and uh, the resectoscope so that you can have a comprehensive, very, very minimally invasive treatment for infertility, even in rural areas. Thank you.